It was here at the Hammersmith Odeon in 1973 that David Bowie performed his final concert as Ziggy Stardust. Bye bye, we love you. A year later, I made my film Cracked Actor for the BBC. Bowie was in America on the Diamond Dogs tour. I caught him in the midst of an intensely creative time, but it was also physically and emotionally grueling. We met in hotel rooms in the early hours of the morning. We snatched conversations in the back of limousines. He was fragile, exhausted and wasted, struggling with the madness of rock stardom. By the end of that tour, Bowie had killed off his extraordinary cast of characters, his alter egos, and moved on to the more wholesome, soulful young Americans. David Bowie's had an amazing career, but for the last decade, he's been silent, until now. First, he surprised us with a new album, and now his legacy is being revisited in an exhibition at the V&A Museum. Tonight, Imagine looks at a decisive moment in David Bowie's personal and creative life. Crack Tactile. I just wonder if you get tired of uh, of being outrageous. If that gets to be outrageous at all. At all. Mm -hmm. If you describe yourself as ordinary, what adjective would you use? Um, um, David Bowie. Uh huh. Well, I'm reluctant to make the judgment about what category you fit into, and I'm hoping that Good. you would say, yes, Good. oh no, I wouldn't be that pretentious, but maybe Thank you have you. a feeling yourself. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really very old-fashioned. I like moving from one area of writing or performing to another um, to keep me excited, to keep me interested, to keep the people who come to see me or buy records interested and excited as well. You didn't understand that. Don't feel badly because I certainly didn't. Uh, David, I know you're watching tonight with the BBC film crew, uh, and it's wonderful to have your old-fashioned entertainment around until the Beatles get back together, but uh, it sure would be nice to talk to somebody who's not being evasive and discussing riddles. Ziggy became a spectacular success, and so ironically did his alter ego, David Bowie. And then at the height of his fame, in the presence of... He was born David Robert Jones in Brixton, London in 1947. At 17, he was Davy Jones, playing saxophone in his own band. He studied mime and decided to combine this with music to create a new and spectacular rock theatre in which he played characters like Major Tom, Aladdin Sane and most successful of all, Ziggy Stardust. 
Two years ago, he came to America and buried Ziggy somewhere between New York and Hollywood. Um. <laughs> What made all of this important to you? I mean, with your background, why, why were you intrigued by all of this? Um, it, it was, I mean, it filled a vast expanse of my imagination. I, I was always pretty imaginative. And the, the imagination can dry up in wherever you're living in England often. I mean, if there's nothing to keep it going. It just supplied a need in me, America became a myth land for me. I think every, every kid goes through it eventually, but I just got onto it earlier. The area that we are now driving through was at one time exclusively for movie stars, producers, writers, and so on. Straight in front of you, the home of Dean Martin, right straight in front of you. Somebody was standing in that doorway and I tried to get up fast enough, but I couldn't. Okay, coming up to the right side of the coach again, folks, it was the former home of Dean Martin's very best buddy, Frank Sinatra. Who also happens to be her stepfather and Linda Christian. Marbella reports Sean Connery settled the fight. Obviously, Sean hasn't forgotten some of his former James Bond tricks. <laughs> in every every avenue I'm it's very calm and it's a kind of a superficial calmness that they've developed to underplay the fact that it's it, that there's a lot of high pressure here as it's a very big entertainment industry area and you get this feeling of unease with everybody the first time that it really came home to me what a kind of strange fascination it has is that 
we, I, I, I came in on the train, on the earthquake, and the earthquake was actually taking place when the train came in. And the hotel that we were in was, was just tremored every few minutes. I mean, it was just revolting feeling. And ever since then, I've always been very aware of how um, dubious a position it is to stay here for any length of time. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the way Brian Kyson does his or, or Barrows does his, I don't know. But this is the way I do. I've used this method only on a couple of actual songs. What I've used it for more than anything else is igniting anything that might be in my imagination. I mean, it can often come up with very interesting uh, attitudes to 
look into. I tried doing it with diaries and things, and I was finding out amazing things about me and what I'd done and where, where I was going. And a lot of the things that I'd done, it, it seemed that it would predict things about the future or tell me a lot about the past. It's really quite an astonishing thing. I suppose it's a very Western tarot. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Just walking like a big monkey I never wanted to be a rock and roll star. I never, only scum. I wasn't even there. <laughs> but I was, you see, I was there. That's what, that's what happened. No, uh, no, it excited me just because it was there. That was enough. I mean, I, personally, I was playing saxophone and I, I was trying to make up my mind whether I wanted to play rock and roll or jazz. And as I wasn't very good at jazz and I could fake it pretty well on rock and roll, so I played rock and roll. And I found I enjoyed writing. The only thing I was ever really good at at school was composition. Not grammatically, I was always terrible in grammar, but I could always write better stories than anybody else. And my time was running wild in the million dead end streets And every time I thought I got it made It seemed the taste was not so sweet So I turned myself to face me But I've never caught a glimpse of How the others must see the faker I'm much too fast to take that test Ch-ch-ch-changes Ch Turn and face the strange Ch-ch-changes Don't wanna be a richer man We all feel the same way, don't we? I mean, yeah. it's pretty music. Sing. Music in general is an important part of all our lives. Yeah, you know, exactly. We're big rock fans. I, and Bowie, we is we thought was the best. God, he intentionally keeps himself a mystery. Yeah, yeah right. Because yeah, he, he's always being somebody else on stage or trying to be somebody else on stage, and he, he, keep, comes, he keeps his, his own personality a complete mystery. So it just it adds to the uh, aura and makes him makes him a more interesting person. my initial fascination with, with mime and, and expressing things with f facial movements and, and body talk 
rather than articulating things. I mean, I'd done as much articulating as I felt was necessary with the actual songs. And if I was going to present them in, in more than a single dimension, I mean, if I was going to present them visually, then I wanted my body or my muscles to play an active part in the performance. Uh, it's funny that the same, very similar masks to the kabuki stick masks were then were used with um, the English Mamas Theatre. And uh, it's very strange that they should come up with very similar designs for faces. I don't know what the link would have been, but there must have been some link. That is kind of from the Lad Insane album. The Lad Insane was like a schizophrenic. That's counted for lots of the. Uh, why there were so many costume changes? Because they had so many personalities that I, each, as far as I was concerned, each costume change was a different facet of personality. This is uh, likewise another Japanese costume. These are all Japanese, and most of this stuff is Japanese. Most of my clothes are Japanese. They have. I'm, I've always been very fond of kabuki style clothes. That's another Aladdin saying thing. That insane, I, I saw him as, I found like lightning, a lightning bolt really representing him. This was the first Japanese costume that I got, which this was um, originally worn by a woodland creature, Japanese theatre. That's why it has funny little animals on it. It says in there, Yamamoto Kansai, <laughs> dry cleaning only. <laughs> More than anything else, I saw that a lot of my songs were very illustrative and picturesque. And I felt there were other ways of performing them on stage. I was never very confident of my voice, you see, as a singer. So I thought, rather than just sing them, which would probably bore pants of everybody, I would, um, I'd like to kind of portray the songs rather than just sing them. That's really how it started wanting to portray the material I was writing. I always found that my material, I felt it was more through, through three dimension. I wanted to give it dimension. I wanted to give it some other dimension, other than that of just being a song. You know. What time is it? It's eight o'clock in the night. Does anybody say how long I've got? They said five minutes, ten minutes ago. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a quarter past eight start. I don't know. senseless things the script is you and me boy time it flexes like a whore falls wanking to the floor this trick is you and me boy time and quaaludes and red wine
that way. Now. 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 You. Not a victim. You. Just scream with boredom. You are not a victim. Time. I never get bored. You know, like you know, stones, really. I never get bored so because I can always stones change. Stones get tired. I'll, I'll yeah. draw a different picture this way or that way. Stones get tired. People who are uh, ACDC. You know what I mean? <laughs> huh? No, I'm not yes. saying Bowie's the best. Uh, like, <laughs> I guess I'm living my fantasy. What's your fantasy? Oh, Bowie. He represents it all to me. Uh, excitement, space. See, I'm just the space cadet, he's the commander. You saw for a long period, or for certainly over the last couple of years, a lot of kids sort of aping you almost, or looking very like you, so that they were, they, they would dress up and put things on very similar to you. Yeah. How did you feel about it? Well, a lot of it came out starting off like that, but uh, over the last year or so it's changing, and, and the, in as much that they're, they're, they're finding out things maybe nothing to do with me, but the idea of finding another character within themselves. I mean, if I'd been at all responsible for people finding more characters in themselves than they originally thought they had, then I'm pleased because that's, uh, that's something I feel very strongly about, that one isn't totally um, what one has been conditioned to think one is, that, that there are many facets of the personality which a lot of, lot of us uh, um, have trouble finding, and some of us do find too quickly. He's, he's from his, his, own, his own universe. What universe is that? Bowie universe. Are you into the Bowie universe? He's the center. I was drawn to it. How were you drawn to it? I'm from Phoenix and I just... came. very very fast and you're not driving and you get that mm, thing in your chest when you're being forced backwards and you think oh and you're not sure whether you like it or not it's that kind of feeling that's what success was like the the, the first thrust of, be, of being con totally unknown to being what seemed to be very quickly known it was very frightening for me and coping with it was something that I, I tried to do and that's what happened that was me coping some of those albums were me coping Taking it all very seriously, I was.
Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Sing countdown engines on Three, two, check ignition and may God's love be with you. thing to do to play the roles well i didn't know i mean when when you're that mixed up and i've been mixed up man <laughs> i mean really it was one doesn't know 
one half of me is putting a concept forward and the other half is trying to sort out my own um, emotions. And a lot of my space creations are in fact facets of me I have now since discovered. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't even admit that to myself at the time. That I would put everything, just make everything a little kind of upfront personification of how I felt about things. Ziggy would be something and it would relate to me now I find and Major Tom in Space Oddity was something, the lad insane, they're all facets of me. And I wasn't really, I got lost at one point. I couldn't decide whether I was writing characters or whether the characters were writing me or whether we were all one and the same. It was just an experiment, it was uh, an exercise for me. And he really grew, sort of out of proportion, I suppose. Got much bigger than I thought Ziggy was going to be. I didn't ever see Ziggy as big. Z Ziggy just overshadowed everything. The rock and roll star who, so to speak, gets big, too big for his britches, he gets really, really, really immensely popular and because of this, he gets kind of very corrupted, and it becomes his downfall. And, you know, like the song says, when the kids had killed the man, they had to break up the band. I definitely think it's got a lot of Jimi Hendrix in it, because there's so many references in the song. The kids had killed the man was kind of like, Hendrix was getting so big, that his managers were giving him drugs and his fans were giving him drugs and kind of urging him to take it and he was doing this to to more or less loosen up on stage and and it eventually killed him and the band broke up how much did ziggy's death have to do with his own personality or with the circumstances in which he he existed or with the yeah it was it really it was his own personality being unable to cope with the circumstances he found himself in which is being uh, an almighty prophet like superstar rocker who found he didn't know what to do with it once he got it. Which is, uh, I, it's an archetype really, it's a, the definitive rock and roll star. It often happens. And I was just trying to document it as such. A cigarette puts it in your mouth. You pull on your finger, then another finger, then a cigarette. What the world is calling, it lingers. So you forget. Can't eat when you lift 
Yes, I had a kind of a, a kind of a strange psychosomatic death wish thing. I think, but that's because I was so lost in Ziggy. I think again, it was all that schizophrenia. And in the death. As the last few corpses lay rotting in the slimy thoroughfare, the shutters lifted an ancient entrance building high on Boucher's Hill, and red mutant eyes gazed down on Hunger City. No more big wheels. Fleas the size of rats sucked on rats the size of cats, and ten thousand peploids split into small tribes. Covered in the highest of the sterile skyscrapers, like packs of dogs assaulting the glass fronts of Lavender Avenue, ripping and re-wrapping mink and shiny silver fronts. Now neckwarms, family badge of sapphire and cracked emerald. In the day now, the gear of the diamond dogs. As if it、uh, was the ghost of Ziggy Stardust you were tying up. Yes, exactly. That's what happened. It was trying to get rid of the damn character. <laughs> it was kind of following me around, and and hopefully, not. You see, I'm very, I, I, I'm very happy with Ziggy. I think he was a very successful character, and I think I played him very well. But I, I, I'm glad I'm me now. <laughs> My God, I can trot him out. Time, giving it, giving it, giving it, keeping it、right. back. That's that's cool. That's cool. The <laughs> next one, got to do it this way to get it. One, two, three, four. Get you when nobody, you're down. Nobody, nobody doing it、uh, up.、Uh, Sometimes. Okay, that's good. I'm only dancing. 